Welcome. This is Barry Jones from Angelic Wisdom, and we're here for our monthly general angel reading for the month of December 2022. So before we begin, I'd just like to welcome everyone back to this monthly series and to also welcome anyone who might be new to our Angelic Wisdom community. I appreciate your um, patience um, and your prayers um, for the month of November, uh, when our, I don't know how many months it's been since I've been able to um, create the videos, um, especially for this monthly series. But I believe it was just one month, but it may have been two. Um, <laughs> so I'm back. And I, my voice is much improved. I discovered that it was my um, inhaler that I was using for my allergies, um, that it, was, it creates um, a hoarseness as well. So I was using it, I increased it during the time that I was um, perceiving a slight adjustment in my breathing. And um, although it can be helpful, but um, as I was told in, in those cases, but um, it may have been too much for me. So over the Thanksgiving holidays, I just stopped using it for about several days and I started to see improvements. So I've just um, reduced it to the lowest dosage that I can have. And so um, I'm feeling better. And you've probably already notice that I've started the daily card messages again. So um, if you're not aware, then, you know, please go to my Facebook page or um, my um, YouTube account um, where you might be able to find uh, that those posts. Also, um, I'm not quite sure if I will have the energy yet to do all of the, the Zodiac readings for this month. But if I'm able to, I will try to do so. If not, then that will, I should be able to resume that in um, January um, at some point. Okay. And so let's just, um, before we go any further, I also just want to remind you too, if you haven't, um, you know, select the notification, um, subscribe to the channel, then select the all notification bell. Um, remember to like and dislike, um, leave comments as all this helps uh, with my channel. And also um, it's very important that others, um, uh, that you share your wisdom as well, because you never know what you your comments might help someone else or start a conversation that's really important so let's just be aware that we are here for each other in that way and also if you'd like um, to get an angel reading with me um, you can go to my current page web page theangelschool.com slash services where you can um, sign up for an angel reading um, that first time promotional offer that I've been that's been out for this year is still available um, since this is my 10th anniversary year and I think because I started this in February I'll continue it through the month of January as well so I'll just have a full year and um, also um, if you'd like to support my channel you can check my um, PayPal me link um, where you can make donations um, to my channel and you should find that below as well in the description area okay so let's take a deep breath and just breathe into your heart space And just allow your energy to just fully ground. 
And so this may constantly may put your attention to the, the soles of your feet. You might want to feel as though your roots are growing and down wide and deep into the earth's core. So the they're writing the word justice. And this has come up for me in some cards. And the, the first thing I think about um, is the energy of balance, okay? And, um, and also, dis, you know, dis, the discernment of and clarity of truth. And, you know, that just thinking about the justice card with that veil, that there are things that uh, are hidden and things are hidden sometimes for a reason. And that also creates uh, a desire to want to seek out information, to seek out truth that is um, appropriate for you. So often, we are wanting information that is hasn't revealed itself. But note that with the scales and of uh, justice, that everything happens in divine timing. And there is, and everything is always in, is balanced appropriately, even so that is to say that things are measured out as they are needed in a way that is appropriately balanced and in harmony with your journey, your specific journey. And so the thing is, is to be aware. I don't know if I just I felt like I just saw the word. Um, I was thinking the word anxiety, and then I saw the word cacophony. So, you know, there might be a lot of noise outside of you and inside. Why inside? Why is there not just that place of peace and rest within? Because what you're experiencing outside is the direct um, link to what you're creating or what you're allowing to be created with, within yourself. So the outer reality is just a projection of whatever you are fostering within. So the, the noise around you is somehow that the noise that stirring within yourself and the noise around you might seem as though it's preventing you from achieving what you want but what is actually helping you to do is see the inner picture so the outer picture is a way for you to see the inner picture to understand whether or not you have prepared yourself enough to be ready to receive what it is you want. And so don't let it be a disturbance or a or turn into a criticism, but let it be act as wisdom, informing you that you have better choices to make within, that you need to be a better gatekeeper of your own inner balance. And keeping in mind that that balance doesn't mean that both sides of the scale are the same. They may weigh the same in order to be balanced, but they don't have to, the, both sides do not have to contain the same matter. So that means, and they're talking about, they wrote the word in front of me, agreement, which I was already picking up on that. This is where they want to go. 
So, you know, we think balance means that the other side has to be fully in agreement with us. The, if one side weight is equal to yours, but they're opposing, they're in disagreement with one another, that means that they're supposed to be there and that there's something that either side needs to check within themselves and to perceive within the other in order to create the change that will allow you to find harmony with one another. So it almost see it feels like, and what they've been telling us even in our daily, our weekly messages, is that our intolerance of one another is an imbalance. There's something that we can both learn from each other's point of view, even if it is detestable to you. There's still something you can learn. And in doing so, you will find some common ground or purpose that you can work together and move forward. And again, it's all about that listening and that observing because the, even if the common ground is very small, it will increase between you as both are listening and learning more about the other. And being a constant oppositional voice to someone else's beliefs does not help them to hear themselves, even if you are right. It does not help them to hear what they're thinking and what they're believing in a way that might help them to shift in some way, to open their heart, to return to the compassionate, loving souls that each of us are at the core of purity that resides within all of our hearts. But you can't wrestle someone to your point of view. And even though our point of view has a lot of reasonable support, it doesn't mean that we're seeing it all. It doesn't mean that our love is at its full capacity. I'm not saying that there are some things that just are clearly wrong and some things that are clearly right. But the reason that everyone is not in agreement or does not see it yet is because the voice, the oppositional voice is shaming them in to the corner that they are in. And that shame is keeping, is, I want to say, is, I want to say it's keeping the oneness, the unity, keeping us, keeping unity separate, divided. And I was going to also say, diluting, or diluting oneness itself. Okay, so let's take a look at the Archangel that we'll be working with for the month of December. 
And of course, the cards on the left and the right, this card will come from the major arcana and the card on the right, the minor arcana. So I'll explain that when I get to it. So let's just look at the, I'll explain that for people who are new, but most of you are familiar with this process. So we have Archangel Sandalphone. And the message on the card says, tune in to your divine potential. Bring the world into harmony. Okay? Tune in to your divine potential. And so again, wow, they're writing the word corruption. But I'm, I'm going to suggest that this corruption, if, you, if we're the perceivers of corruption, then that also means, and that corruption causes us to sort of react, to um, become enraged without being in, in, in the, the right word, consumption, that, that, that it consumes you so that you forget to accompany all of this with love and compassion. So this should temper the love and the compassion. It's okay to be enraged when you see injustice, but it has to always be tempered with love and compassion, unconditional love and compassion. And if that's so, then you're not able to tune into your divine potential fully. And they wrote everywhere. And so if we're enraged without unconditional love and compassion, then we're not going to be able to bring about harmony in our world. And because we've forgotten this, because we've forgotten our true power and our ability to actually create, to bring harmony into the world. Because since the original fall, we've been trapped in this veil of illusion where we see ourselves in an inferior position. And it's this imbalance of awareness that causes us to act out in ways that might promote ideas of superiority. And where that exists, then there, in, order, in that dynamic, the balance is that others must suffer. And, um, and you sort of prime a group of souls to um, feel or to develop an inferiority complex. And that is a dis disease, dis-ease, that creates all kind of disease and dysfunction in our world family, just as much as the superiority complex does. Both are raging extremes devouring the hearts and souls of each of them who plays in that sort of game. It's sort of, I'm thinking of, of a um, seesaw. It's like a seesaw effect. There's no end to it until each side decides to stand and and no longer lean on the platform that is creating this cyclical imbalance. Now, I heard someone, um, actually it was Dinah Cooper, mention, 
And it's true that, you know, from 2012, this year, 2022, is this, the winter solstice is going to be the midway point. So 12, 21, 22 is going to be the midway point between 2032, which is the new golden age. All right. And the fifth dimension will be fully in that new era of fifth dimensional frequencies. And so it makes sense that they're bringing this up. And the right word they're writing right now is cooperation. Cooperation is the simple idea for creating harmony in our world. Cooperation over aggression, they write in front of me. And a lot of us who believe we're working on the right side, and of course on both sides they believe that, but those who are working on the side of the righteous, well, I hate to put it that way, it sounds so religious, but you know what I mean. Um, that, if it's aggression, that you're demanding um, that someone do the right thing without allowing them to feel heard, understood, listened to, etc. Then, and without the unconditional love and compassion, you will also be participating in this dynamic, this cyclical platform or dynamic and leave us sort of wavering about the, the future. And it's a feeling of decisiveness now. Do you truly, and this is the word that right in front of me, happiness, do you truly value happiness? Do you truly value happiness and peace above all else? And they're writing Christianity like, as if to say, above all beliefs. Because I believe that what they're saying when they wrote that in that moment is nobody has a monopoly on happiness and peace. Ultimately, at the core of purity of each soul, as well as their beliefs, religious or personal values, is the desire and the remembering for peace, happiness, and harmony. And sometimes we are not willing to ask the question, is me being right or being the loudest or having the last word or the last say more important than my happiness, peace, and inner harmony. Knowing that when I say my, I'm claiming that for all of oneness because we are all oneness. And they want us to really stay focused on this, not to get confused by this. That is to say, the confusion comes when we try to make excuses or we try to find, you know, reasons for just or for justifying. And that's interesting. Perfect word since we're talking about justice here as it was explained from the beginning. And then we corrupt, coming back to that word, justice by trying to justify things to our ego point of view as a way to elude everyone else and what they desire and what they want. And I'm not saying that 
some horrendous things deserve, let's say, um, that they deserve a seat at the table. Like, I'm not saying like, you know, wrong is wrong, wrong is right. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is, is that through cooperation, we can, we can ward off the wrong before it gets to that point, before the person or people get to those acts. Did I just even hear what I said? Because <laughs> a lot of this is coming through. I'm having a hard time keeping up with it because it's just coming through new. But, but we can, through cooperation, thinking, like, re, like reimagining every circumstance through the priority of cooperation can greatly shift and prevent things before they turn into something that's wrong. When we humiliate and shame, we just push that red button so that people move towards wrong, despite knowing deep within that there's an opposition within them to making that decision. Because that core purity within is always shining its light without judgment. It is just being, knowing no other way but to be itself. And it, in this way, holds us all accountable to this justice that they're describing. And they wrote the word experiment. And we got to remember, the Earth School is an experiment. And so we, in our leap, in our ability to leap too quick, to judge quickly, have to remember that this is where the compassion comes in and the unconditional love because it's an experiment and it's ever unfolding. It's not like every action is, is already predetermined to be right. Or why would there be free will? And why would free will exist if not God was giving us some room to discover? All right, let me stop talking <laughs> on that. All right, let's take a look. So we have the major arcana, the major theme or lesson. So the hermit. Now, this is a card where it's all about that inner reflection and illumination. So if we were to turn our attention inwardly and just sort of listen, be in awe of the unfolding expectations, um, experiences, ideas that are formulating within you because of everything that's happening around you and to you, etc. The universe is saying you would be illuminated by your by all of it that's going on within yourself. And so this is a a time, and, and they wrote the word job as I was trying to say all of that, with sort of like with, with the ray, these rays around a job. It's our job right now to actually to do less of what it is that we automatically jump or react or get triggered into doing. And we're most often triggered to fix everything. 
And in that is the judgment that everything is wrong. We don't trust enough that everything is under the care of, of God, of oneness, of source, of all of the ancient ones and the wise ones, the cosmic beings. It's all under watch. And of course, your own I am presence. Because each person, each situation is, there is, within, there is a wise one, an ancient teacher, a master. And if you take more time, do less means take more time to observe, you will have ample more resources to, to develop to help you to discern life-altering wisdom. And I don't know why when I said wisdom, I saw the flash system. The system can only be changed from within each heart as it requires each heart to replace the belief that the system has power, dominion over everything. Belief in the system makes you panic. It makes you anxious. It makes you act without caution without responsibility. Because the only system that ever existed was oneness. Embedded within us is everything we need for a world full of cooperation. A world of compassion so deep that we understand how to care for one another and how to build each other up and to, to raise our frequencies together high enough that the wrongs of the system that we keep fighting and resisting will no longer be able to materialize because the hearts of the many have shifted and opened up their hearts to allow the system of oneness to prevail naturally. Because fear in the system of injustice is what allows, we have to it allows it, what it causes us to project that over as an, an illusion over the reality of oneness, you see. All right, let's take a look at the guardian angel message. And this message is going to tell us how we can work with this theme in the day -to, our day-to-day -day awareness. So we have the seven of air, okay? And, you know, right away you see this little boy who is, we don't know if he's taken from her basket while she's resting or sleeping, or if he's thinking about it. He's looking at, what he has and what she has. He could be there to even offer her more as she's maybe curled up in a fetal position, maybe allowing her mind to, to, to um, worry about not having enough. 
But the, the idea here is awareness. I love this word here, awareness, because we don't know, we don't see someone in the act. We can't prove. And that's the thing about the Seven of Swords. It's usually suspicion. And allowing our minds to run wild with suspicion or conspiracy theories is playing into the system and it's making it impossible to trust and to promote oneness. If you have a suspicion, then somehow that suspicion has an equal component or a oppositional component that's balanced, in balance with it, that it is allowing you to attract that. So it's the same thing, and this, maybe this is an easy way to make the, you've heard me say it many times. Those who are, are against war and those are who, who are for war are still vibrationally in alignment. Therefore, the outcome would most likely be a war. The only person whose belief would be truly anti-war is a person who has set their stakes and their priorities on peace, as if to say cooperation. Now, I'm not saying that you should blindly trust everybody and accept and, and believe that everybody's going to do right by you because that is not the reality. But what I am saying is even though a person might, you might be suspicious of, or you might have proof or reason to believe that they might not have your best interest in heart. I'm not telling you not to prepare or protect your, or yourself or your things or the people that you love. But what I am saying is what you do after the action they have made will determine if that cycle within your life and within their life, even though you may go your separate ways, is it worth it for that cycle to continue? Because we often have the um, the tendency to punish. And we haven't learned that punishing others doesn't bring us the inner peace that we're seeking. It actually just keeps perpetuating the dynamic that is constantly challenging and disrupting your life because that is not the lesson. The lesson is oneness. Remember, compassion and unconditional love. So let's say somebody just simply mistreats you and your response is to react, to show aggression towards the way they've mistreated you. Well, the, the reason for whatever that person keeps choosing to do that is because at some point early in their life, the person did not understand or was not shown well enough that they were loved despite mistakes or strong errors in judgment. The only way to heal that soul, to bring it back into the fold of oneness, is to keep showing compassion. Be slow to anger, slow to retribution, retaliation. And somehow we have to find appropriate
rehabilitation. So rehabilitation is definitely a necessary component. And it is if it's done right, it is a process that can not only heal, but foster cooperation, ultimately. There are consequences to our reactions, just as much as there is a consequence to the actions of others who might make a strong error in judgment. But what is more important? Happiness and peace, and it can only be had when all of us work to create cooperation and harmony in our world for everyone, even the sides we don't understand. But that's our job to figure out how to heal that part of us that doesn't understand, ultimately. Because as long as the other is punished and your lack of understanding goes unhealed or reconciled and rehabilitated, then we're stuck in the karmic lesson. So the next time, and I'm just using this example because it's simple, it has less triggers, but the le next time you are angry with someone who has wronged you, think about cooperation and harming our world and think about rehabilitation that's appropriate for the person's wronged you and rehabilitation for that aspect of yourself that cannot forgive or at the very least understand. So the month of December is punctuated by the holiday seasons of gift exchanging and the one month where we totally devote all of our forces to love and compassion, even if in some or most cases, it's just a big display. But we've all come to believe from our various beliefs and religions and values that this energy, this consciousness is appropriate for this time of the year. And what those of us here have been working towards and the new age of our human family has been striving for is the return to oneness where this essence of goodwill, peace and harmony becomes our way of life. And where mistakes will be made but true rehabilitation on an energetic level, on healing levels physically, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually are the way that we resolve our differences and express our cooperation. And our cooperation for one another is our responsibility that we must maintain and hold as our ideal of 
true justice. And there are many yet hidden factors about how this will look and how we will evolve to that place or that state. But they're giving you the, the principles, the, the roadmap to initiate and implement this new beginning and foundation. So I send you lots of love and angel blessings and have a blessed, beautiful month of holiday celebrations. And most of all, love and peace and harmony. Happy holidays.